I woke up, I got out of bed, started walking down the stairs, and suddenly realized, wait a second, I'm not walking down the stairs one step at a time. And and I took another step and I was like, well, wait a second, my feet aren't swollen. And it was the first time in probably 11 years that I'd gotten out of bed without my feet killing me. Like it used to be sometimes even just to touch the floor was like somebody hit my foot with a hammer. So I'd have to like put my legs over the bed and then sit there for 10 minutes and then kind of get up and I'd walk like an old man. I could barely move um, until I had been moving for like an hour and a half in the morning. Um, but I was, I was like walking down the stairs like a normal person. And suddenly I realized it was like this eureka moment. I was like, oh my God, this is what it feels like not to feel pain. And one of the things that I was told right away is that I would probably be in a wheelchair by the time I was 45. Um, I'm 45. <laughs> I'm not in a wheelchair. I've been a professional chef my whole life and I, I was cooking um, in the professional kitchen, which is not an easy place to work. Um, everybody's seen reality TV shows, you know that it's 90 hour work, week, work weeks and, and uh, chefs are prone to screaming and, and quite a stressful environment. And I just started feeling crappy in my late 20s and I, I just wrote it off to being part and parcel of being a chef. Um, but eventually it became clear that there was something severely wrong with my body. Um, I started getting really bad uh, acute attacks in my right shoulder. I also just felt like crap all the time. I just felt like I was exhausted. My body felt swollen and sore. Um, I had headaches all the time. And then I started getting these acute attacks where my I wouldn't be able to even move my arm. It, it was so painful. It felt like somebody was like stabbing me in the, in the shoulder. And uh, I didn't know what to do because I had kind of, you know, as guys were conditioned to just put your head down and, you know, pretend it's fine. And you show it. If you admit that you don't feel well, it's a sign of weakness. And so I just tried to like soldier through it. But it got to the point where I really had to, obviously there's a major problem. And I, I started going to the ER. I didn't know what else to do. And um, they'd x-ray my shoulder and say, ask if I'd had an injury, which I hadn't. And then they'd send me home with painkillers. And that was that. And that happened time and time again until it started going over to my other shoulder. And that's when I was like, there's something wrong here. It's going on in both shoulders. And it happened in my hip. And when it happened in my hip, that's when um, I was, I was, admitted to the hospital and I ended up being, uh, I was in the hospital for like 10 days, I think, and I was under observation. So in so much pain, I couldn't, I mean, I could barely speak. It was in, in so much pain. And uh, they finally did an MRI of my hip and saw that it was full of fluid. So the pain was from my sciatic nerve being stretched from all the fluid in the hip. Um, and they thought I had an infection, which I didn't. Um, uh, and so eventually uh, they sent an email to all departments within the hospital to see if there was anyone who could understand why I would have so much, you know, such a high white blood cell count, so much fluid in my hip with no infection. And that's when the chair of rheumatology came back and diagnosed me with rheumatoid arthritis.